Hi, welcome back. Uh, I got a special additional bonus episode here around some of the gotchas with uh, using DAX from the Performance Analyzer and Power BI Desktop and using it in the context of Power BI Report Builder and your paginated report. So it, I showed you in the previous video around this how you'd use a table to generate the DAX you need to bring it over into your Power BI Report Builder file and just use the DAX the same way you would in both places. But there's an interesting scenario that comes up where that can cause some headaches if you're not aware of some important things uh, in that context. So here I've got a, so this is my local Power BI desktop file and I'm connected to this uh, via DAX Studio and Report Builder once again. And what I wanted to show here specifically was I've got a table visual here, just like I mentioned in the previous video, and I've got my performance analyzer on. It's a, it, what I've done, interestingly enough, is I've created a direct query uh, model as part of my desktop file. So I'm just using AdventureWorks 2014, and I've connected uh, the sales order detail and the sales order header uh, items together. So you can see here my model, it's very basic. It's just a one to many, and I'm, it's just based on the sales order ID, okay? so. Uh, this is just against an Azure SQL database under the covers. And so here, if I drag these items, I just want to see the sales order ID and the product IDs associated with that. And so here I have one product ID associated with my sales order ID, and I have my DAX query here. And so if I uh, see here my DAX query uh, as it looks in um, DAX Studio, interestingly enough, one of the things you get from your performance analyzer is you get the very nice T-SQL query. Uh, that's being generated here. And as many of you know, I am a much bigger T-SQL fan than I am a DAX fan. It's just something to keep in mind as you're, uh, as you're using the query analyzer. So if I hit run, oh, I got the wrong thing highlighted there, sorry. Hit run, and so there, brings back exactly what I would expect. But what happens if I don't use this, uh, this query in my report builder output? And if I just want to use the drag and drop option, because for whatever reason, I don't really want my users to go and copy the queries from one to another. Well, what happens is if I go to my sales order header and do my sales order uh, ID, and I bring over my sales order detail, bring over my product ID, and I want to filter this down just like I had my other report filtered. So just to remind folks here, uh, I have a filter for 64846. Uh, so I want to grab my sales. So I'm actually going to do the name equals 64846. That's there. Okay, and I'm going to go run that. You see, it gives me back junk results. It doesn't match at all in terms of what I'm expecting here. And that's because when you're using direct query, the DAX that's generated here, and actually you see the similar uh, challenge in Excel, for example, it's expecting a measure of some sort. And one of the things with Power BI Desktop, uh, you know you could just you know, use these implicit measures here. But you see I created this measure called price total. Uh, so if I go back and I go to my measures and I do price total, now I run it and I get back exactly what I'm expecting to see here in terms of my, I have two product IDs with a price total of each. And here what it's doing is it's giving me a count of the two product IDs uh, that I have here, uh, which is two. And I'm getting back a result I would expect, just like I got in DAX Studio, because again, it's doing me a count of the product ID. So it essentially created an implicit measure on the fly for the product ID in this context uh, to give me back my result set. And if I instead brought over my price total to this and my product ID don't want to count. Uh, don't summarize. Sorry. I then see here my price total uh, is there. My product ID is there. So that's something that again I 
Look, I even got tripped up here in the video. It's a little later in the day for me. I'm a little tired. But in all seriousness, uh, you see how it created an implicit measure there, and I immediately got confused because it said, oh, well, I, you know, I'm not matching my results anyway. Well, you need a measure in uh, Report Builder for this to bring back proper results in the direct query scenario. So this is really important to keep in mind because I know some folks have gotten frustrated with this. Uh, and it's one of those gotchas when you move between desktop and report builder. Keep in mind, and again, if you brought over the query as is, you see in DAX Studio very specifically, it's doing a count. I should have been paying a little bit closer to attention there, especially when I saw count big here. But uh, just something to keep in mind, uh, especially if you're using direct query. And again, uh, hopefully you're finding these videos valuable because there's a lot you're able to do with your pagination reports. And it's just something to keep in mind when you're using uh, Power BI Dataset as your main data source. Thanks very much.